All right, so for those of you that have never been on one of these live Q and A's before, let me just first of all uh, say welcome again. And it's December 3rd, 2019. <laughs> I forgot to update that text. And this is a live Q and A. So on these live Q and A's, what we do is I'll introduce myself first of all. So my name is Trevor Turnbull. I'm the founder of Expert Selling. We have a couple of different programs on how we support that, that support solopreneurs. So these are consultants, coaches, speakers that are selling services uh, typically, and they typically struggle with in one of three areas or all three technology. So they either, you know, are not very tech savvy and they have no interest in becoming tech savvy. You don't want to learn how to build landing pages. You don't want to do the kind of work that, that you that a virtual assistant can do. And rightfully so uh, we work with those types of people. Um, so tech team, of course. So you, you are doing everything in your business. You're wearing all the hats. You need to figure out how to outsource this, but without breaking the bank. And then time. You are looking for strategies and advice and mentoring on how to most effectively manage your time. And then a lot of that comes down to having really good processes in place and trusting that process, right? Knowing that you're not going to waste your time. Like I just got off of a call today with somebody in our mentoring program and we talked about a lot of things and that was the purpose of it though. It was a growth strategy call and the way that it was structured was we, we said, all right, let's look at the next three months and six months and nine months because he's actually committed to working with us for another nine months and let's break down what would you do in those time periods. Obviously, you're not going to do all of it in the first week. We need to kind of chunk this thing out, right? So, we talked about how we had already done his, uh, his outreach to his Quick Wins uh, LinkedIn campaign, which is his first degree network, his existing network of prospects, as well as the first three messages of his prospecting campaign or his second, third degree. We call that the Steady Leads campaign. And, you know, now he was saying, what's next, right? Oh, and we wrote his, his article, his MVP article, his massive value piece. And that was used as a follow-up, right? So he's asking, well, what's next? And we said, well, there's a handful of things that we can do. Number one, you have an amazing appointment campaign. In fact, I'll maybe reference this a little bit as I go here because I just got done a call with one of these. I'm just gonna close this down just so it's not a distraction. I just had a call with one of the new people in our program and we were actually talking about this. Here it is right here. So this is Bill. Bill's in our program right now. And we, we built this page with Bill. So this is Bill's account. He have his, has his own ClickFunnels account. We gave him a template to, to pull from, from our ClickFunnels account. And then uh, we jumped in there and we helped him refine it with regards to the outcome-based statement that's at the top. So again, this page is built to allow Bill to get people on his calendar to get prospects to want to book with him. Why would they do that? Because they can learn how to improve their sales process and hold their sales team accountable. We, we chose that wording because we know that Bill's ideal client is the owner, founder, CEO of a company, typically manufacturing companies where he can come in as a, you know, outsourced sales VP or a fractional sales VP or whatever you want to call it. And keep, a sale, keep the sales team accountable, keep the numbers going up, um, improve the sales process, improve the tracking so that follow-up is happening, all these different things. Things that the owner a lot of times doesn't have exposure to, they don't have time to do themselves, but they know is critical, right? So what Bill's done is he put a page together that outlines why a person would get on a call with him, right? So he's got a handful of bullet points here that explain like, here's what we're gonna go through on the call. He introduces himself in this video. This is a really short video. You can see it's 90 seconds, but the intent is to, again, just reiterate what's on this page, essentially, right? Because some people like to watch, some people want to read, uh, so we want to accommodate both. And then there's a calendar on here for those people to book a call on his calendar, and then he's got a handful of testimonials for social proof. Really quite simple, right? But it took a while for Bill to get to this point. And it, and it wasn't typically because this work is hard, at least not for us, because <laughs> it's, it's not. This is what we do every single day. But we had to work with Bill and coach him through the 
the content. Like what, what should go on here? How, what should Bill say on this video? He had to do a number of takes of this video in order to get comfortable, to really have it come through authentically. Um, but this is the kind of stuff that we do with the people that are in our mentoring program. And anyways, Bill is sitting with this page and it's never actually been sent out to people that are in his network, people that we've helped him build a network around. So that's the next step that we're doing with Bill. Then following that, we talked about building a, a checklist of sorts. So we thought, what would be really valuable for Bill's clients to receive um, as, a, as a value piece, right? And we thought, well, hey, wouldn't a like daily, like you're, the, you're an accountability coach for a sales team. Why don't you put together your, your top five or seven or 10 tips for salespeople to increase their results by following this checklist every day. And the goal would be to have them be very specific, very measurable, very accomplishable and simple. And something where he can have it built out in a nice PDF, like get it designed, get it, make sure it looks good. And, and then tell people to print it off, right? Stick it on the wall, stick it on your computer screen, and then do it on a daily basis. It would be an, an immensely valuable piece that Bill could share with his network, with these CEO types, right? And again, if we know that we're going after CEO founder owner types, Bill's landing page has to be structured, not in the, not in the sense of like, hey, do you want a sales follow-up checklist? No, no, no. It has to be structured where it says, hey, do you want to keep your, your sales team accountable? And you want a really simple, quick, easy way to do that? Download my checklist, have them print it off, stick it on their wall, and then make them do it on an ongoing basis. So just give away some of your best stuff. That's essentially what we talked about with Bill. And at first, there was a little bit of resistance, like, ah, you know, I like this is, this is kind of my, this is my bread and butter. This is what I got paid to do, right? And we had to remind Bill that, you know, there's nothing that any of us is doing, especially in the consulting, the coaching, the speaking space where it's completely proprietary, right? All ideas are borrowed from something else. It's all about execution. It's all about, you know, taking action. It's kind of the same thing. It is the same thing, but it's worth stressing. It's the ideas don't mean anything. The training doesn't mean anything. We have another person in our program who has this amazing backend training platform with all these really well-produced videos. And he was struggling to get opportunities to land new clients. And yet all of this amazing content was sitting behind this gated wall. Now that's not to say that he can't still sell that content in its packaged form with a nicely structured program that's got some accountability and, and check-in forms built into it and some group calls and, and one-on-ones and that type of thing. But we encouraged him, we said, hey, Take that amazing content, all these ideas that you have in your head, all the things that make you great at what you do, and share it. Just make sure that it's relevant to the audience that you're sharing too. So that was another thing that we talked about with Bill was let's get that checklist created, right? Let's get it done. That's the next thing. Then we were talking about, well, how are we going to deliver it? Well, we can just give people a landing page or we can, and let me just go to a handful of these to show you guys some of this stuff. So this is an example of a landing page for a, a lead magnet that we have that's for a checklist, right? So, and I use this one as an example because, you know, this is what Bill um, is essentially doing himself, right? And you can see here, it's, it's like, here's a seven step checklist for the LinkedIn funnel. This is a, a document that I created, geez, almost two years ago now, maybe even longer ago. But it basically breaks down like, all right, if you were starting from scratch right now with LinkedIn, what would you do as a step by step by step in order to get some results, right? Nothing too complicated, not, not, not a big long training program, which we have that too. But instead, just give me the manual. Just let me stick it on the wall. Just let me remind myself that every day I need to go find prospects. I need to build awareness. I need to evaluate the engagement, monitor who's viewing my profile. I need to connect with more people. I need to monitor the responses. I need to, you know, have some type of call to action like a landing page like I'm showing you. And then I need to re-engage. I need to feed them with content. I need to put LinkedIn posts into the feed. All these things that help you stay top of mind so that when that person's ready to buy, that they think of you first and that you're there, you're present, you are, you are, you're in their world, right? 
So this, this is uh, an example of a landing page that's where you would actually get an opt-in. And then the next thing that we talked about was, okay, well then what about the email sequence? All right, put it on the list, right? So you're going to build this checklist. Then we're going to, then we're going to build this landing page. Now you need an email sequence. Now, why do you need the email sequence? Well, let me show you the behind the scenes of one of our email sequences, just so you can see what this looks like. And some of you that are watching this right now, you might actually um, recognize how this whole thing is, is structured here. So we've got this nurture sequence that's built from all of the emails that I've sent in the last like six months that have been repurposed and put into a nurture sequence. And we're constantly adding to this as well. So there's always new things that are going in here. And some of these emails have never seen the light of day. Don't get me wrong. They're not all um, reused or repurposed in this way. But you can see here that I've got a nurture sequence set up that every single day, if somebody opts in here, they're going to first of all go through a sequence that's going to deliver this thing that they requested. And then there'll probably be a reminder, maybe one or two more emails too. But then eventually, if they don't book a call or become a client, they're going into this nurture sequence. Okay. And when they go into the nurture sequence, <laughs> they're getting tagged appropriately. Every single day we have an email going out. Not everybody's comfortable with an every single day uh, email, but I'm just making sure I'm on the right microphone. I am good. Uh, not everybody's comfortable with an everyday email. I am now because I was convinced to do it like six months ago and I resisted it. And the person that convinced me is like, no, man, you, you gotta, if you can deliver an email every single day, what happens is the people that don't want it, they're going to drop off no matter what. And they're likely going to complain no matter what. The ones that do want it are, are wanting more from you as it is. So getting you know, like I talk to a lot of people that say, yeah, yeah, no, I, I do. I do email follow up. I've got a monthly newsletter, a monthly newsletter. How often do you think that thing gets read? Right. Unless it's got some amazing deals on, um, you know, discount coupons for new, new clothes and shoes and food, then it's likely not being read that much at all. Right. Cause it's just not frequent enough. It's not, it's not relevant enough. Like my background is in uh, sales in the signage industry. So think billboards, right? So I used to sell the creative and, and with the corporations that wanted space on like billboards and signage, like building signage, right? And it was all based about frequency and reach. You wanted to have enough exposure to your message over and over again in order to uh, have it resonate, have it stick. The same holds true for TV, the same with radio. It's the same with your email communication. And yes, you got to know that you have, you have to make a choice, you know, maybe every two days, maybe you're not comfortable with it. You do three, every three days, two days a week type thing. Right. But if you're doing monthly newsletters as a means to like generate marketing opportunities and prospects, you're not doing enough. You're not doing enough. You should be trying harder. And there is things that you should consider when you're writing that content too. So I'll just give you an example. So one of the very first emails that I deliver is one that goes to a uh, article that I had written on entrepreneur recently. So this is my rock star article. This is the one that, uh, that's what they referenced it as anyways. It was a, it was a very long article that basically spoke about the last 18 months of us in this business. And when I say us, I mean, you know, our entire team, as well as in particular, my, my wife and I, and what we, what we went through where I took out a big loan. I went to a, um, a mastermind. I joined a mentoring program, a, you know, close to six figure a year mentoring program. Uh, my wife and I went to a, uh, transformational experience on a, on a weekend to be able to connect better and to be able to communicate and be better, better parents, just better people. And then a couple weeks after that, our son Bodhi was born. And that's what this article is referencing is the fact that he came four months early. So he was born at 23 weeks and five days, I believe, which is really early for those of you that have kids we actually lost the baby almost at the exact same time, about three days earlier than that previously. 
this little guy's a miracle. He was a pound and three ounces. And now he's like this. Well, this photo that's actually at the bottom isn't even the most recent one. You can see this was about, eh, it was about eight months ago, but he's a monster now. Like he's almost bigger than his older brother. But anyways, I, I put that one in there and I do it on purpose. And again, you know, you might be looking at that and going, yeah, this business that I run is not about my personal story, but but it is though too, right? Like maybe you won't go that deep in telling your personal story, but what about the, the corporate culture that you, that you have in your business? What about, you know, your philosophies on work-life balance? What about, you know, I don't even care if you're selling like refrigerators, people still buy from people, right? So having an email in there that talks about what's important to you on a personal level is, an, is a really important thing. That would actually help you stand out. If you're selling something where you have competition, bring your personal story into your message. I digress on that. But anyways, you know, the truth about your sales cycle. So this one, this next video is talking about, you know, being realistic. Like, what is your sales cycle? Like, Bill, we had to talk to him about that today. He's like, yeah, you know, I've had some wins, but oh man, I lost a couple clients along the way too. And we had to remind him like, Bill, we've only been working together for like four months. We're going to keep doing this for another nine. Imagine the momentum we're going to build when we keep messaging those prospects and, and not just with random stuff or trying to get them on sales calls, but like valuable pieces, your MVP article, this new sales checklist, uh, an invitation directly to an appointment to be able to book a call to talk about like how to keep your sales team accountable. Like you have to just keep going. And on that note, that was the other thing. And Bill's a sales guy, so he gets this, but you know, we were able to get phone numbers off of the contact information off of LinkedIn. And he brought it up too. He's like, you know what else I should be doing in between building all of these assets and like working towards this? He's like, I should just pick up the phone and call people. And we're like, yep, absolutely. And I want to encourage you too, if you're watching this right now and you're looking for the next tactic or strategy to generate more leads and bring in, you know, more opportunities that are coming all inbound and you are sitting on a database, an existing client list, uh, a prospective client list, whatever it is, where you have some phone numbers, pick up that phone. You want more clients, go get more clients. Are you gonna hear no more than you're gonna hear yes? Absolutely. But how bad do you want this, right? Of course, keep working towards building the entire system, right? Do the MVP article, build the checklist, build the landing page, drive traffic through your messaging, set up your email sequence, all of these things that will build momentum over time. But if you ultimately want clients, go get some clients, go to some networking events, pick up the phone, right? What we're doing when we support people in our program is we're giving them the motivation and the encouragement and, and the process around doing sales but also helping them build the machine so that they don't have to worry where their next client's coming from. Because I've seen this before too. When we talked about Bill and he says, my goal is to get to $20,000 in monthly recurring revenue, right? Well, he's going to hit that goal. He's going to hit that goal. And then he's going to get busy. And then it's going to get pretty overwhelming with all those clients. And hopefully he's got a good process in place where he's in control that's another piece of our, our solo method. If you've never seen our solo method, um, here, I'll just pull it up on here, actually. So our solo method talks about that as being one of the intersection points of the, the methodology that we have, which you can see it kind of small here. Let me see if I actually have it bigger on this page. No, I don't. But anyways, you guys should be able to see this here. So the solo method. Solo market, choose one audience. The solo funnel, have one campaign to run those people through to qualify, to like to qualify and educate them. And then the solo offer, have one clear offer of what you sell and what the price point is. And then focus on that. And what you get is you get consistent lead flow when you have an intersection of audience and campaign, right? So you have the perfect audience funneling through the perfect campaign, the pages and the sequence of questions that you're asking and forms or calls that they're booking on that type of thing creates lead flow. Cash flow comes when you have a campaign that converts to phone calls and you have an offer that's compelling that people want, right? That creates cash flow. 
Workflow, the way, why we reference this one here is workflow, is when you have an offer that you're crystal clear on that serves one very specific audience and you don't waver from that workflow knowing that you know your stuff and you're gonna deliver on that and you're not gonna have the client dictate the direction of how you're going to deliver your services, you end up with clients you actually wanna work with. You end up making the kind of money that you want and not being stressed out because your clients are constantly driving you crazy. And this is one of the things that we talked about with Bill too because we know Bill's gonna hit his sales goals. He will. We have a whole year to work with him. We know that we can do this the right way. Then Bill's gonna run into the challenge of staying up with his prospecting. So we're gonna be inserting solutions to that. A sales coordinator. Um, you know, virtual assistants we're already doing, but just better ways to track his sales opportunities. And then sales even too. Who knows? Maybe the sales guy might even outsource his sales. But the point is, is that we're always going to evolve to the next step. We're always going to evolve to that next step of our business. So we have to be prepared for all that. And where all of this kind of came from in summary from me going on this little bit of a rant was... Um, you know, kind of seeing the path that our students go down when they join our program. And initially they get overwhelmed because they see, you know, a three, six, nine month plan laid out in front of them. And they go, oh my God, that sounds amazing. But like, oh, how am I ever going to get that done? And the answer is always, well, you start with the first thing. You build your checklist, build your valuable piece, right? Build that valuable piece. What can you create today that your prospect would go, wow, that's really helpful. That, that's, that's a very valuable piece. And I'm talking your best stuff. Whatever you think is proprietary, that there's no way you could possibly give it away because that's what you sell, give it away. Try it. Your customer or your, your competitors aren't doing that, right? And let's be honest. If you're, if you're selling services as like a consultant or a coach, how many of those clients that you work with are actually going to do the thing that you, that you, you know, hand to them? Like we have a, a training program, which I'm sure a lot of you that are watching this have never seen all the videos in our training program. Have you? Where the results happen is through the close engagement, through mentorship, through live Q and A's like this, through group calls, through uh, Facebook support groups, through live chat, through, um, you know, just all the ways that we support the people in our program. That's when the transformation happens because everything else in its entirety is completely overwhelming. It's one bite at a time, right? How do you eat that elephant? One bite at a time. That's how you do it. So that's uh, what I'm going to leave this one at because uh, I do have to run here. I hope you guys... Uh, found some value in this. If anything, just maybe got a little bit of motivational kick to kind of hit the ground running with your own campaigns. Uh, stay tuned because I'm considering, and I'm actually going to email my list tomorrow about this. We're considering putting an offer together that's a very inexpensive, but the intent of it will be to build a 2020 growth strategy plan. So just like what I just got done talking about here, it would be a plan that you can use to set the wheels in motion correctly for the new year, and but without having to do it all yourself. So you can get some of our expert advice. You can walk away with that blueprint, with that plan, whatever you want to call it. And like I said, I want it to be inexpensive so that we can help as many people as possible with this. So uh, if there's interest in that and you're watching this now or you watch it later on the replay or on any kind of clip later, um, reach out. Let me know if this is something that's of interest to you. So this would be something where we would map out your, we would take a look at your LinkedIn profile. We would map out your target audience. We would look at your, um, your messaging scripts and, if you, and we would provide you with all of these things too. And we would actually you know, create some customization to those and, you know, even talk through sales process. I think every person that we talk to will be a little bit different. They'll want some support in different areas, but as its foundation, what I wanted to be able to deliver on that with that, uh, that product, that offer that we're going to do here before Christmas, before the end of the year is to give you a plan that has all the pieces in place for you to be able to do some outreach, to be able to generate some new business, 
kickstarting yourself into 2020 because now is the time for you to be doing that. You, you should have been doing it a month ago, but at the very least, start the planning now, implement in early January, and I think you will be pleasantly surprised at the kind of results that you can generate from that. So we'd love to be able to help you, all right? So on that note, have a good rest of your night, your day, whatever it is, wherever you happen to be watching this. Um, hope you guys have a good one. And thank you for uh, being here and letting me scoot out a little bit early. I got to go get my kids now. All right. See you guys. Bye.